So we were supposed supposed to be forming a lower triangle matrix with our elementary operations. We did some operations to get an upper triangle matrix. I think everybody agrees that's an upper triangle matrix, but the problem is one of our row operations caused our L matrix to not be a lower triangle matrix. So let's look and see which of the three elementary matrices do we think would be the culprit. So they're all on the left side of the board. I'll put them all in a box so we just pay attention to those three. Which of those is not a lower triangle matrix? E2. Let's see. <laughs> lower triangle matrix. So E1 is not and E3 is not. So our swaps are messed up. Let's try to redo our row operations with no swaps. I realize this may take five or six operations because we're going to have to do some subtractions to move our constants where we, or our leading non-zero terms where we want them to clear out column one and two. But we're going to redo this problem with no swaps. <clears throat> so whenever you're doing this, never do swaps because that ruins it? I believe the swaps will. Well, if your elementary major C uh, that corresponds to your swap is not lower triangle, uh, then it will mess it up. So if we look at our, uh, this corresponds to adding two row one to row three. If we added any amount of uh, row one to row, basically all your addition of a row to another row should appear down a lower right there, or lower left. And so they should be lower triangle matrices and our swap is what puts a non-zero up there. So we're going to do the same process but completely avoid swaps and hopefully we will get a lower triangle matrix out of this. So this is we're a redo. <coughs> 0, 0, 6, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 4. And let's double check that's the exact matrix. 2, 1, 4. 2, 1, 4. Yep, that's the right matrix. All right, how in the world can we get a 1 in the upper left corner if I'm not allowed to swap? Add row 2 to row 1. So we're going to do that first. Now this is not the most efficient way to reduce the matrix, but it's the way we're going to try to do it to avoid those swaps. So our first row is 1, 2, 9. And now we can use the 1 we just moved up there and clear out column 1. So we'll do the regular move we would do in this case. So on row 2 we'll subtract row 1. On row 3 3, we'll subtract 2, row 1. Questions on the, our third matrix here. So again, it would be really nice to do a swap. We would have our triangle matrix, but that swap will, again, cause a problem with our lower triangle matrix we want to recreate. So how can I get a one or a non-zero in that middle position? Minus row three. So I could Probably the easiest way if we want to put a positive 3 there is just subtract row 3 from row 2. So we'll do a minus row 3. And again, we don't have to clear out the top of column 2. So I'm not trying to go after that 2 in the top like I normally would. Normally I'd be trying to completely clear column 2. I don't need to do that now.
And our last operation, we need to get that negative three out of the bottom of column two. So we just go plus row three. Plus row two, right? Plus row two, right, you can't, adding row three to itself would just double plus row two. Do we have an upper triangle matrix? So we got our zeros down below, so all of our non-zeros are in the upper triangle. So this is U, our upper triangle matrix. Now we're going to reconstruct our L matrix, which corresponds to the inverse row operation in reverse order. Question. Yep, that six would definitely be negative. All right, we just have five row operations now. So we got E1 through E5. And we'll do, make sure I get the order correct. All right, so E, we'll work backwards. The last row operation we'll call E5. So I'll just label with that purple again. So that's our E5. E4. Now E3, E2 you can go either order. Those two subtractions we did didn't matter the order we went. So I'll just go E2, E3, and the last one will be E1. All right, five elementary matrices you need to write out. Write them all out. I'll do the E5 matrix. All you need to do is perform that opposite row operation on the identity. That's not good. That's not an upper triangle. E4 is not going to be an is not going to be a lower triangle matrix. So we're trying to make a lower triangle matrix <coughs> here, but that one, that extra one, is preventing this from being a lower triangle matrix. So it looks like this won't work either. So I'll have to go back and see what's going on. Let's Get the rest of factorization. Oh, so in my notes it says you permute first and then you can factor. So you permute separately. So it'll look like a PLU factorization. All right, so all hope is not lost. So we'll not worry about that redo. <coughs> this is in your book, we'll just skip it. It's only another quarter page of notes. We'll just jump into subspaces. <laughs> All right, so I have not used 
really used vector space or defined vector space before? I don't think. So that's probably, did we? Yeah. Basically addition and scalar multiplication are the two operations you're allowed to use. All right, so we'll start, we'll start with that and then we go into subspaces. Start with the definition of a vector space. So a vector space is a set of vectors we'll call this set S such that so first property any two vectors in this set, so any u and v in S, u plus v is in S. So if I add two vectors in your set, then the result vector that you get should be in your set also. And this is called additive closure. <coughs> and second property, any vector in S <coughs> and any scalar alpha alpha V is inside the set S. So I'm going to write the third point in here although it directly falls out from number two. I'll write it a little bit over. What does that third sentence say? Zero vector is in the set. Zero vector is in S. Now I said it comes out directly from uh, the second point here. What alpha could you use to get the zero vector? Zero. So if you look at the second uh, point, any take any vector in S, doesn't matter which vector, multiply it by zero, you'll turn that into the zero vector. So point number two automatically gives you the zero vector if two is true. So this is a vector space, basically just closure under addition and scalar multiplication. Now we'll look at a subspace. So a vector subspace is also a vector space. It has to have these same three properties right here. So a vector subspace is also a vector space. What that means is you take any two vectors in your subspace, add them together, it'll still mean the subspace, and you can scale any vector in the subspace, and it still is inside the subspace. And let's talk about linear combinations. Linear combos are also in the subspace. And the way you look at a linear combination, you basically repeatedly apply one and two. You just add another vector. And remember, you can multiply any vector by a scalar, and it's still in your space. So if we look at linear combinations, alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha and vn. Now if we just look at rules 1 and 2, so this is in S when v1, v2, vn is in S. So if you 
look at the first term in our sum here, alpha 1, v1. Vector 1 is already in S, so alpha times vector 1 still inside S because it's a subspace. And alpha 2, v2 is in S for the same reason, just a vector in S multiplied by a scalar. And then, of course, if I add two vectors in S, I get a vector in S. And you can just move over one at a time and every time you add a new scalar multiple of a vector in the set, you're back inside the set. So this all seems very abstract. Let's look at an example. <clears throat> so we'll take our usual space R3. It's also true for R2, but we'll look at just at R3 specifically. I want to prove this. So all I have to do is show 1 and 2. It doesn't matter which one you do first. We'll just go property 1 first. So property 1 says take any two vectors, in this case in R3. And the only thing I know about these two vectors is that they have three coordinates. So I could write their coordinates out. We'll go A, B, C, V will be D, E, F. Adding together U and V, I will have the vector A plus D comma B plus E comma C plus F is that vector in R3. Yep, didn't change dimensions, changes the coordinates a little bit, it's so the sum of the other coordinates, but it's definitely in R3. So that means we have property one. Now we're gonna go for property two. So we'll take any scalar, in this case it'll be a real number, and we'll look at alpha u, we'll use that u from above, is this alpha u vector in three-dimensional space? Yep, still three-dimensional vector, so it's still in R3. And that is all we need to show right there. And we are done here. So we'll put a little box here, color it in. So we are done proving R3 is a vector space. So we're going to prove a span of vectors, of n vectors. Is a subspace or is a vector space? I'll write the span in set notation. So in set notation, the span is any vector, I'll use the letter u, such that u is equal to a linear combination of these vectors. So that'll be alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha n v n. for any scalars, so for any alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n scalars. So that's what the span is. So there's again two things we have to show. 
the sum of vectors in the span is still in the span, and the scalar uh, product of a vector in the span is in the span. All right, let's take two vectors in the span. So what will addition look like? All I'm going to do is write out u1 first. Oh, I don't want to use double subscripts. Ooh. Let's, I'm going to use capital A and B instead of u1 and u2. And then we'll let A equal this sum with alphas, and I will let B equal the sum with betas instead of alphas, so I can avoid double subscripting. Then nobody likes that. And to write a nice beta, usually, well, I like to start at the bottom and then draw my, the bottom of the beta first and then that gives a nice curve on the top like this. If you try to write it like a capital B, you end up with a, uh, whatever you call that, handle at the top and that's not a proper beta. <coughs> Now these vectors v1 through vn are already set. So those are not any vectors, those are the vectors that made up our span. So there's n vectors pre-selected in the span. And we're supposed to show that any sum of any two vectors in the span is still inside the span. So I just wrote down what two vectors look like in the span, a, uh, a and b. Those alphas and betas could be different numbers. Those are just scalars. So those are arbitrary, but all the vectors, v1 through vn, are already fixed. So let's look at what addition looks like. a plus b, alpha 1, v1, plus alpha 2, v2, plus alpha n, vn. So that is the vector a, plus the vector b, beta 1, v1, beta 2 v2 plus beta n vn. Now the form we need to turn this into is written in the upper left of the board in set notation. It should be written as a linear combination and we'll write it with v1 first, v2 second through vn. All we're going to do is use the commutative property of addition to rearrange the order here. So I'm going to move v1 to the front so we'll write as alpha 1 v1 plus beta 1 v1. So I'm just taking vector 1 putting it at the front. Vector 2 we'll write next. So this is plus alpha 2 v2 plus beta 2 v2. So that's the vector 2 move to the front. And we're using the commutative property of addition. So I can rearrange the sum. And now we'll write the dot, 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 keep going. And then we'll put the vn at the end. Alpha n vn plus beta n vn. So all we did was reorder addition. What is the last algebraic move I have to make to turn it into the form in the upper right corner? So we're going to factor out our vector. So it'll be the sum of two scalars. So we'll have alpha 1 plus beta 1 v1. So that's our first vector. Plus second vector alpha 2 plus beta 2 v2. Our last vector alpha n plus beta n vn. And these are all just algebraic properties we had looked at before when we did vector operations a 
couple weeks ago. This is the exact form we want. It's scalar times vector one plus scalar times vector two plus et cetera, scalar times last vector. So this is the exact correct form. So this has to be in the span. So that's in the span. So that was property one, property two. We have to show that a scalar Let's go with beta and then the vector A, where beta will be any uh, scalar. So this will be beta times, and I'm just using that expanded form of A, alpha one V one plus alpha two V two plus alpha n v n. What algebra do I have to do to get it in the form so it looks like it belongs in the span at the top? Just distribution. So it's supposed to look like scalar times vector one plus scalar times vector two, et cetera. So right now it's scalar times a sum of vectors. It's supposed to be a scalar times individual vectors added together. So we're just distributing right here. So this is beta alpha one V one plus beta alpha two V two plus etc beta alpha N V N. And to be fully correct, we'll reassociate putting in some parentheses. So you can see clearly beta alpha one is our scalar and our times vector one, beta alpha two is our second scalar times vector two, etc. So let's do some example problems and we're gonna decide is the set I'm describing a vector space or is it not a vector space? So if it is a vector space, we're going to take any vectors and show we can add them together, get back inside the space or any scalar products back inside the space. So we'll take our set S. Now remember if S is a span, you're automatically a vector space. We just saw that. So it would be very silly for me to write down S is a span of vectors and then ask you if it's a vector space. Because the answer will always be yes. So I'll write in set builder notation. So we'll have three dimensional vectors such that X equals three Y plus one and Z equals negative two Y. So this is some of the vectors in R3, the vectors that have these properties here. So is S a subspace? So it's a little tricky to write down what vectors you can form like this. We're really looking at a linear system. Two equations, two linear equations. Let's rewrite this in the matrix form and see if that gives us some insight. So we'll rewrite this in a matrix form. So I'll just move my variables to the left side. So it's x minus three y equals one and if I add my 2y, I have 2y plus z equals zero. And if I put it into a matrix, it'll be one, negative three, zero, one. And zero, two, one, zero. So that would be our augmented matrix right there.
how many free variables we have in this system? Should be one free variable. It's not necessarily super important in this uh, problem here. So let's go ahead and I think scalar, let's just try scalar multiplication first. take any vector, any vector v and s. We do have some information on what v is going to look like. So v will look like x, y, z, such that x equals 3, y plus 1, and z equals negative 2y. Let's multiply this by a, any scalar. Let's look at alpha v. Which is alpha times x, y, z. So alpha x, alpha y, alpha z. Now the question is, does it satisfy the relationship that is written on the board right above it. Are those two equations true? It's a little bit strange now because if you look, alpha, uh, your first coordinate's alpha x, not x. So alpha x is going to go in where you see x. Alpha y is going to go in wherever you see y. And then alpha z is going to go where you see regular z right there. So we're seeing if the three coordinates still have this relationship. Let's go ahead and check that. So first one is alpha x equals three alpha y plus one. And our second equation will be alpha z equals negative two alpha y. So I'll work on that second equation first, the alpha z equals, I'm gonna rearrange the terms on the left so it's alpha times negative 2y. And now, as long as alpha is not 0, we can divide by it. So that means z equals negative 2y. So that's the same equation still true. So that one works. Now we're going to manipulate the left equation and see if we can turn it back into x equals 3y plus 1. Why is this not equivalent to our original equation, x equals 3y plus 1? Plus one wasn't yep, our plus 1 wasn't scaled. That was our issue right here. So it's not going to be the original. Because the plus 1 is not multiplied by alpha. Alright, so we just showed scalar multiplication won't work. There's actually an easier way to show this is not a vector space. There's point number three. Let's think about this as the vector zero. Why is the vector zero not in S? Because one doesn't equal zero. Our first equation is the one that won't work. Second equation is just fine. First equation's not going to work. All right, so we already showed it's not a sub or vector space or subspace. Also, zero, the vector zero is not in S because vector zero, 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 zero. And of course, you try that on equation one x equals 3y plus 1, 0 is equal to 3 times 0 plus 1, so 0 is not 1, so that vector doesn't fit in the right form to be in the set S. 
Uh, we also could show the sum of two vectors is not in there. It would be more similar to our scalar multiplication attempt and that you would find that plus one would mess this up again. All right, so the answer is no. So we're gonna look at a similar problem, except let's describe it in a different way. set 0, 1, 0 plus 1, 0, 1 times the scalar t. So is this set a vector space or not? So any ideas on how we could either show it's a vector space or find a vector that should be in there that's not in there? So zero, zero's not in here, but how would we show zero's not in this space? So let's show zero's not in here. Whoa. So let's show the zero vector, zero, 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 is not in S. If zero is in S, then the zero vector zero, zero, zero would fit the form zero, one, zero plus one, zero, one T for some T value. Why is there no T value that makes this true? So it all comes down to the second coordinate here. So our second coordinate is what's going to mess everything up. So we'll highlight that row right there. So our y coordinate. Can never be zero. There's no way we'll get the zero vector out. That line will be zero equals one plus zero, which is zero equals one. Of course, not true again. So we get no zero vector in here. Now I change the set a little bit. <coughs> so we'll throw another uh, combination in there. So now we'll have the vector zero, one, zero times any scalar alpha that you want. What combination of alpha and beta will give me the zero vector? So zero is an S because so our alpha was which number? 
negative 1, and what would our beta have to be? Beta 0, so we'll get 0, 1, 0, plus 0, 1, 0 times negative 1, plus 1, 0, 1 times 0. And add this up, the first two vectors cancel out, that last vector will be a plus 0. So we get the vector 0, 0, 0 now. Now it's only part of showing us a vector space, so we have to show the sum of two vectors is going to be a vector in this set, and then the scalar product or scalar multiple of any vector in here is going to also be back in here. So let's work on the sum first. So I'm going to take two vectors, any u and v. Let's use subscripts now because we're not using subscripts on the alphas and betas. So we'll go v1, v2, and s. So this is supposed to be any vectors in S, so V1, 0, 1, 0, plus 0, 1, 0, alpha 1, plus 1, 0, 1, beta 1. And our vector 2 will be the same form, just alpha 2, beta 2. So you need to figure out what will go in the blanks here. I'll highlight those blanks with the yellow. So what expressions go in those two blanks right there? So how can I write this sum <coughs> in this form? So go ahead, add these two together, and do your best to put them into this form. It'll probably involve rearranging terms and doing a tiny bit of factoring. It'll definitely involve rearranging terms. So add those two together. And it is not okay for your leading term at the end to be 0, 2, 0. That's not the right form. It's got to be 0, 1, 0. So what I'm going to do here is partition. I'm going to leave the 0, 1, 0 outside because that needs to be at the beginning of this vector to be in the right form. It should be pretty clear what to do with the 0, 1, 0 vectors. Add them together, combine their constants. So I'll do that part first. So the 1, 0, 1 vector, I'm just write beta 1 plus 1, 0, 1 beta 2, so those will be at the end, and then the next step will factor out and write it as 101 times beta 1 plus beta 2. So we'll factor those betas out. Now for the tricky part, what to do with the other three vectors. So they are 010 alpha 1, the second 010, and the third 010 alpha 2. So those three vectors I'll write next.
So I didn't do anything exciting, just commuted stuff here. So I just reordered things. So I put my 0, 1, 0 vector at the front. Now what I'll do to my last two vectors, factor out the betas. So this will be 1, 0, 1 times the scalar beta 1 plus beta 2. So that's the last part right there in the correct form. Bring that 0, 1, 0 down. Now what we're going to do with the 0, 1, 0 vectors, we're going to factor what scalar is my middle vector multiplied by? 1. So it's a little bit silly. We don't normally write this, but I'll write it times 1 plus. So my scalar I'm going to factor out as alpha 1 plus 1 plus alpha 2. So I'm factoring out these three scalars right here. And remember what the form looked like. It was 0, 1, 0 plus 0, 1, 0 times a scalar plus 1, 0, 1 times a scalar. So this is the right form. And this alpha 1 plus 1 plus alpha 2, that's going to be a scalar because you add up any scalars, you get a, always get back to a scalar. Those are just numbers. So add up any scalars, you always get a scalar, even if you add 1. You'll still get a scalar, and of course, add two betas, you'll get another scalar. And this is the right form to be in the set S. So we'll have to show scalar multiplication tomorrow, because it's almost 10.